we were talking about film, and yeah. that's why, and that's why I brought you here. Excellent. To this big I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, so you know, how do you deal with people in the film industry? Like, how does it work? What's the relationship as, you know, I mean, like, I don't even, I don't even know how to ask the question. Yeah, I mean, you know, on, on the music side, we always get, we always get bands saying, you know, how do you get your, how do you get your song in, in this movie? movie? How do you get it on Twilight? How do I get my song on Grey's Anatomy? And, um, and I think it's, it's, it, it's just pitching like everything else. I mean, specifically with, with getting your song placement. Um, in it, you know, you, you've got to do a little bit of research to find out where those music supervisors are. Right. There's, there's a lot of them out there, but there's very few of them that are great, mm -hmm. that have the clout in order to put an independent band song on a soundtrack right. or, on a, or on a TV show like Grey's Anatomy. Or OC or... Or, I think, or, or OC, yeah, yeah or, or using it in a commercial, for instance. Sure. And there's, there's, you know, there's less than a handful out there, um, but there's all sorts of ad agencies in, in Canada, for instance, or in America that's always working on behalf of the clients, writing and producing commercials that need music. I mean, if you think about it, there, there's never been more of a time where people had to consume music than ever before in, in history. And, um, um, but, you know, like I was saying, that the competition is really, really fierce. So if you're, if you're a band looking to get your, your song in there, the best thing to do is make sure that you've got the right two or three songs that you want to pitch. Right. If you're a metal band, don't pitch Glee, you know? I mean, it would be you could. It'll be a cool Maybe, episode, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think you're going to get a call back from Ryan. Um, but you know, really pinpoint where you want to pitch, and then after that, it's just research. You go on places like the Internet Media, uh, the Internet <laughs> Movie Database. Uh -huh. You go on like the Ontario government has an in production webpage where it shows you all the films and television shows that are in production who the director is, who the producer is, right. and then you do some digging around to find out who the actual music supervisor is because that's the person that you want. That person is ultimately responsible for picking and choosing all the music that goes with the television show, the movie, the commercial. They are, they're actually creating the feel of the scene with, and using music, but more importantly for the band, they also help negotiate the fee that you, the rights holders, are going to get with the actual film or production company on it. Um, so just really quickly now, now yeah. does this like does a band have to be signed to a label in no. order to no? So no. like you write a really good tune, you're in your garage with your you buddies. You can go for it right away. I mean, it, it, uh, ten or fifteen years ago, it was almost nearly impossible to get the ear of somebody if you weren't on a major label like a Sony, Warner, EMI, BMG, and those and, and Universal. But now, I, I think you know, it, it, growing up watching Garden State movie and hearing about the shins for the first time yeah. or seeing um, High Fidelity mm -hmm. and, you know, the character saying, you know, I'm going to sell, you know, five songs of this and it's the beta band and it's a band that really nobody had really heard of in, in America. Um, it, it's, it's a lot easier to be independent because I think that they're not really looking for names to sell as the emotion now. Right. When you're dealing with soundtracks, yeah, you want the name of metric and right. you want you know the big names to sell the twilight soundtrack and they'll always be there but you know it, it, it's like anything else there's human relationships that happen where it's like i'd love for you to you know we love that that new metric song or the new aloe black song and you know hey how about this new band that we just signed to and sometimes they'll do it just as a favor but most importantly it's got to fit with the scene it's, it's and it has to fit right. with the vibe. Yeah. I mean, no, no great amount of favorites will happen just because, hey, you know, you did this for me and I'll do doesn't happen like that. Because there's too many people involved that will say, why is this song there? What, right. what, because your brother, sister's cousin used to go out together? Like, it doesn't happen like that at all. So in the end, it comes down to the music, which is, which is kind of good because now everybody's on the equal playing field. And then they can focus on like production quality and like the things that actually matter instead of like just like, you know, getting it out there or whatever. Yeah, for well. sure. And, and for, for bands and for artists, I mean, you know, all you need is really two or three really great songs. Don't send them demos. Don't send them stuff where you're not happy with the quality. It's mm -hmm. gotta be, it, it has to be ready to go. And then uh, you'll start pitching away, you know doing your research on watching those television shows and seeing what the vibe is of the song and, and you know, of the song that they've used and, um, um, and just start pitching. You can call them, you can email them, you know, find them on Twitter, Facebook, ask them questions. And once you build up that relationship, then you can ask, is it okay if I send you these songs for, you know, for future use? 
almost all the time they'll say, yeah, no problem. But I'm going to ask you a question now, because yeah. you're, you're, like, massive on Twitter. And, you know, like, when people, like, you know, sort of barrage you with emails mm. or, like, DMs or whatever, they're like, oh, please follow me back. Like, what's your what's your whole stance on, on, on using Twitter as a, as a point of connection? Um... Like, is it overwhelming or like? Yeah, it, it it can be. I mean, I get I get people all day long and all night long saying, "I've just really," and it's usually all in caps. I've just released the greatest song ever. It's blah 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 blah, and here's where you can listen to it. And I don't know whether or not if they're and they're adding me, or they're sending me on on a DM. And the first thing I look for, and maybe it's just me, maybe I'm paranoid. The first thing I look for is I look for their stream to see are they really targeting me or are they going after everybody. If I see that they're going after everybody, I, I, I ignore it. Right. Because there's so many people that do that. And you know what? I don't really need to be told by an independent artist that their songs are great. I have various people in the industry, like everybody does, as a point of contact and people that we trust. I have really great managers that we work with that will you know, feed me little tidbits of people that might be available or that this artist is really hot. And, you know, they just played their third show and nobody knows about them. You have to come and check it out. So we all have that level of, of um, you know, there's the, the show from a platform with a bullhorn that we all virtually ignore. Yeah. And then there's people that we trust that's in our lives to tell us, this movie is great. This movie sucks. Right. This TV show is awesome. You need to see it. And um, that, takes, that takes time to develop. I have, I used to do, and I still do from time to time, this thing called Demo Tuesday where... Bands can just send me a link and I'll listen to their stuff and then I'll give them feedback in 140 characters or less. That's amazing. Um, you know, and I'm, but I've never, I, and you know what? I think I've signed one band in my entire life based on a cold call or a cold email. Normally, I mean, I'm so far, I'm looking so far ahead with things that we already have this year. Like right now, it's it's July or right now it's August. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Like it's I was August. It's, it just moves so slow. Um, <laughs> It's August. I, we know what we're releasing up until February of next year. Right, yeah. So this is how far ahead that I have to look. So if somebody is like, hey, I've got a new song right now and I want to get it to radio, we, there's so many deciding factors, for mm -hmm. instance, on, on if we're going to pick it up or not. And some of it doesn't have to do with how great the song is. It helps. But sometimes, you know, our radio team is just fully booked and they don't have time to pitch the fifth song to the same person over and over again. Sometimes it's just our staff is just too overworked and, and just can't handle it anymore, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, which rarely happens, but it goes from time to time where, it, where it's like, uh, you know what, we're releasing three things on that day. We can't release it because it wouldn't be fair. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I'm looking for all kinds of music. You know, we have Relapse Records, which is like metal, and we have The Wiggles and Sesame Street and Barney, which is kids stuff. and. Um, so, and Putumayo on the world music side of things, and uh, it's, it's everything. It's very it, diverse. It's, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It, you, you have to be, because there's, there's, people just don't listen to one set of music, I find, these days. Do you ever listen to music and say, hey, this is really cinematic, and like have like a weird like cinematic kind of... I do. There, there's, there's a couple of artists that, that we have. Underworld is one of them, mm -hmm. where about two years ago, when we started to work with them, I, I've loved this loved this band for, for, for decades and, uh, um, and I thought what would be really great is to turn the Olympic Games into a giant rave scene and have <laughs> Underworld just go for it and Fat Boy Slim and all of this and I'm not going to say that I predicted it because I didn't tell really anybody which is all in my mind um, and nobody would care what I have to say about the Olympics anyway um, but then they both, you know, Underworld and Fat Boy Slim both kind of became part of the Olympic scene right. and so there, there's times when you, yeah, absolutely, you listen to music and you think, wow, this hip-hop song would be great in, like, a kung fu movie. Yeah. Or this song, this ballad would be great in a love scene. But those are, you know, people much smarter than me make those decisions, so I'm kind of glad that I don't have to. <laughs> I just have to find really, like, really good music that if I think that if I can think of some, where to put it, hopefully somebody else can see that as well. That's awesome.